fun bosses, troll bosses. I kind of wanted to make a video because Blizzard used to make bosses that had just really stupid mechanics. They made things that were just fun or to have fun with other players. It's kind of something that's been lost now as WoW got all serious and made a lot of money. But back in the early days, we actually saw a good evidence of this. So let's look at the top five trolly bosses. Oh, Molten Core. The beginning of boys becoming men and the sight of a druid or shaman not healing would make you vomit just before you G-kick them. MC is still an amazing looking place. Not least because of the scale of the damn place. I mean, hell, this place was built on the idea of 40 players being able to spread the shit out. Compare that to Alakea or Algalon. Our first hero, the originator of violence, the godfather of destruction, and the first boss where your carried raiders really showed up. This whole encounter is an enormous joke on fresh raiders, and ultimately, you are going to see this happen a lot. The best part of all this is your raid leader's reaction. Who the fuck was that? How can you not tell you're a giant ball of flaming death? They do the Harlem shit. Lag, mate. This is the kind of situation that would keep you awake at night until the boss was decently on farm. However, some people could never get this shit right and they would be made to stand forever alone from the whole raid as chances are you are going to blow them all up. The bomb is an obvious troll, but this boss presents us with three levels of raider. Those who don't notice anything, those who only notice written warnings, and those that can tell if they are a giant red ball of flame without a boss mod, which will come into play later. The reliance on boss mods allowed the trolling to take the next inevitable step. Just watch this. No other boss in game has ever allowed people to actually enjoy it thoroughly without actually being in the raid. Baron Geddon, I salute you, my man. Slice, 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 move, 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 move. Da brute mother! The heroic only super mega ultra boss that wasn't as hard as the other bosses you had already killed? That's kind of a troll in itself. It's the second time that we've been granted an extra boss for defeating the heroic encounters of a raid. And again, it was to be a disappointment in terms of difficulty. However, that's not to say she wasn't cool. The look and feel of the encounter was epic. She was ultimately considerably easier than several other encounters in the same tier. And due to the way the fight worked, only became dramatically easier as your raid got more gear. Fun trivia. The scars all over her are from Deathwing banging her. Try and unsee that. So where's the big troll here? We all remember back at Geddon, we discovered that some raiders only seem good because they can obey a boss mod. Well, what happens when boss mods don't work anymore? Oh yeah, baby. Good times ahead. In fact, more than anything, it wasn't the damage she did or whelps running around that screwed you over. It was a simple spell taken from an unusual source. Remember that this excellent games-based movie? Did you open? No! Twilight Slicer is so simple it's hilarious. Two people create a laser of death between them and have to move it out of the raid. One problem, not even a boss mod could tell who these two people were. Enter your boss mod reliant raiders, turning everyone into Swiss cheese. Either at a high percentage or a low percentage. Usually at the low percentage. I love Twilight Slicer. It was so predictable. About to cast? Just give yourself a little room to breathe and see if it comes near you. If it didn't, go on about your business. But this is World of Warcraft, where everyone needs to be stroking everyone else or they start freaking out. In turn, this gives even funnier moments when 10 people are all bunched up and that delicious purple ball appears above them. The pure panic that ensues from them all running like rats on a ship. Of course, the person who actually had it is the guy who stands still and doesn't notice. Never be that guy. Anyway, 
Die! Come on! Die. All right, the next two I've put together because they're five-man bosses. But I'm talking about them during the Burning Crusade when they were on Heroic. And legitimate. If you've done them after or you did them in overgeared content, then you won't really get the same message. Understand that these two were a pair of c Time for fun! We kill someone else. Hellfire. The Shattered Halls. One of the most infamous TBC heroics. Not just because it was harder than a nerd at a cosplay competition. Shit, that's actually really hot. But it also had a time limit for the Karazana Tumen, which made it generally the most feared and enjoyable instance ever. To sum up, it was the balls. Ormog doesn't get the credit he deserves. The whole instance is a non-stop race, and each boss has its own ups and downs, with Kargath Bladefist being the most well-remembered, because he literally tore your party apart, leaving Ormog devalued, but this guy was hilarious. Firstly, I love the idea of two-headed ogres, and the potential fun that happens with threat, something they forgot when it came to this guy. There are a million ideas on how the threat tables on Ormog worked, but after doing him again recently, after all the threat buffs and vengeance changes, they are all complete bullshit. The truth of the matter is that he generally chose the worst DPS in the group, and gave that mother a huge bunch of threat to panic him. It's pretty much a fixate, as even in recent days, I couldn't out-aggro the threat that this person had. As someone who believes Blizzard did this for fun, I'd like to think they wanted the potentially worst player in the group to deal with a fat giant ogre smashing him in the face and then watch him try and deal with it. Most of the time, that player ended up running around like a moron. From a tank perspective, it threw everything you had learned out of the window, build massive threat early, and then gloriously, the boss with two heads decides, meh, fuck it, I'm gonna kill that guy instead. The next ogre bro, Blackheart, was the maker or breaker of a Shadow Labs heroic run. The rest of the bosses were trivial in comparison. And fuck it, I'm gonna say it, I wiped tons of times on this guy. When TBC launched, and every time I laughed my ass off. Mind control is old school, nothing new there, but everyone mind controlled for an extended period of time, doing full damage, that's next level. It was the entire experience where you were almost a ghost in your own body. I imagine it's like a bad drug induced trip. Wiping because the entire group of people decided to beat the bulging nutsack off the healer and do nothing but watch it happen is genius. The quote, TIME FOR FUN, is a clear jab from Blizz for the way this boss can kill you over and over, but be funny every single time. We can't really have a trolley list without an actual troll in there. But hell, if there's one troll who is designed with pure fun and trolliness in mind, it's the one and only Bloodlord Mandicare, vanilla style. The entirety of this fight is designed to make you laugh and cry all at the same time. It might be hard for some people to grasp the idea that guilds actually progressed through Zulgur up, but the 20 man zones were not designed to be wiped out easily. Mandakir was generally the first wall a guild would hit, until they decided how to deal with it. That's right, decided. No set tactic, kill the pet, not kill the pet. Each guild had a different way of handling him, but ultimately the cries of GRATS as he cut your goddamn head off would resound equally for every single guild. This boss actually levels. He gains experience. Every three kills he gains a new level and actually dings. And he does so by farming your raid members. Then rezzing again so he can kill you over and over again. This fight is also longer than Apocalypse Now and gets increasingly harder as it gets on due to him leveling off your sorry asses. Ding. The next fight really speaks to me. As a testament to how the older WoW developers either one, thought that WoW was not going to live past the first year, or they didn't give a shit either way. I kind of miss those guys. Nefarian, the big bat. Well, at least as far as early WoW was considered. Everything had built towards fighting him. We crushed his sister. We raided his citadel. The eldest son of Deathwing himself will rain down brimstone, fire, and uh, giraffes. 
it would be absolutely absurd to think that the mechanics of Nefarian would fly today. Can you imagine this? Of course not. It just wouldn't happen in modern serious WoW. But back in vanilla, be happy that Blizz went all the way to put in what they thought were the most hilarious mechanics possible. Why don't we break the hunter's bows? Why don't we make it so priests kill people when they heal? Ooh, I know! Let's trap all the rogues in front of the dragon's mouth. Before that's even an issue though, we have to ditch our hard fought, finally dropped and 39 other guys didn't win it awesome capes! For a shitty blue one with the worst stats ever to protect us for one piece of shit spell in the entire 30 minute encounter. Everything about Nefarian is not only awesome, epic, grand, but completely hilarious. Just look at the pre-fight. Certain combos of Draconids were extremely deadly, so it was a good idea to check what they were with most of the raid logged out to avoid repairs. Then you could set the groups up properly. In doing so though, you got a 15 minute respawn. 15 minutes for an encounter that takes on average 30 minutes before you could even pull him. Keeping 40 people occupied for 15 minutes is an encounter itself. You can tell how much fun Blizz had with designing this boss and a lot of love went into it. Even so far as to go back and add another class call to him when Death Knights joined the game. Of course it was another joke spell by gripping the entire raid underneath his sexy belly. That's my top 5 trolley videos, I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, I think it was a cool look at how much fun the developers used to have with previous bosses. None of those bosses ever really got complained about, although they were really just designed to have fun, not only by the designers, but also with the players, making people laugh while they were dying, just putting stupid silly things into end bosses. We're not really going to see that anymore. Anyway, if you enjoyed that video, please like. Uh, and also watch out for my main videos, which come out generally once a week. There's a couple in the background for you to click if you want to see something similar to this. Alright guys, bye.